All right, next piece we're going to look at is how to turn word equations, so standard words, into chemical equations and vice versa, back and forth. All right, so the learning target is I can write a balanced chemical equation from a word equation, and I can write a word equation from a balanced chemical equation. Balance part may or may not have been true this year, depending on which order we went through things. If not, it'd be the next thing you learn. All right, what's important to know is that there are things called diatomic molecules. Di, the prefix di, you should be familiar with. That's the prefix meaning two. So two atomic, two atom molecules. So the molecule consists of only two of the same atoms, which are covalently bonded together. So this is only true when they're by themselves, not when they're with any other atoms. So we call them the Magnificent Seven, or the Diatomic Seven. These are the seven. I'll often rewrite them in the form of bromine, then iodine, then nitrogen. So they spell out the word Brinkelhoff. Ask me in person, I'll show you. But Brinkelhoff is how I say them, but these seven will make the diatomic seven or the magnificent seven. So whenever H is by itself, it's never just H, it's H2, or N is N2. They'll never be found alone, they're always paired together. But you still just call it hydrogen, or hydrogen gas, or nitrogen, or nitrogen gas, etc. So the way to remember these is pretty simple. Hey look, those diatomic seven make the shape of a seven on the periodic table starting with element number seven, nitrogen. But if you count these out, how many elements do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, I thought you said there were seven. There are, we're missing one. This little guy up here, hydrogens are one exception. It usually doesn't fit in. So just note, you can't forget little number one, hydrogen is also a diatomic. So you're gonna need to know these, make sure you do. That's your diatomic or magnificent seven that are always paired together. All right, so how do we express these chemical equations using words? Well, here's something you really want to have in your notes. The balanced equation, which is C3HH plus five, you may or may not know what that five coefficient means yet. If not, don't worry about it. O2, reaction arrow, three CO2 plus four water. So tricarbon octahydride, you should know how to name that. We've done naming before. Gas, so that little G will tell us in a minute. Reacts with oxygen gas. Note, oxygen's by itself, so it becomes O2. It's part of that diatomic group. The reaction arrow means to produce or to turn into. Then these are your products over here. So the plus arrow on the, on the product side means and. This thing is made and this thing is made. But on the reactant side, it's this is re reacting with or reacts with the other thing. So make sure you have all those pieces. All It's color-coded, so it should make a fair bit of sense. So remember that these are your reactants. Not on the slide. You want to write that down. Reactants over here. Products over here. You're reacting together to produce products on the product side, the right side. Okay, a few more helpful to produce reaction arrows. So we usually just put one direction arrow, like we did in the last slide up here, just like a little green one. So we say, oh, it all just starts with reactants and all goes to products. Kind of like when you burn paper, you can't unburn paper. But technically, there are some reactions that you can go from the reactant side to the product side and then back to the reactants, and they go back and forth and do this funny little dance of changing back and forth between reactants and products. Kind of like switching partners at a dance. If they have an arrow with a triangle over it, a triangle is called delta, it means it requires heat. Usually has oh, it's either just the delta or delta H. Either one means that you need to put heat into those reactants before they turn into your products. And they might have the word catalyst, or they might have a molecule on top of it like MnO2. If it's on top of the arrow, that means it's a catalyst, something that is required to speed up the rate of the reaction. There's a demo you'll see from me that if you were to let it sit out there at room temperature, it would take about a hundred years probably before anything would happen. With a catalyst, it takes about one second and it becomes really cool. So that's how we show different reaction arrows. 
They all still mean to produce, but with something else required. All right. How do we know what state of matter it's in? Well, based on the little subscripts in the parentheses. So, hey, S, shocker, is a solid. So, AG with an S down below means it's solid silver. If we've got it in a G form, that would mean it's gas. So, oxygen gas, not oxygen liquid, that'd be really cold, would be the gas form. L, which if you wrote this down on paper, it'd be like a cursive L. You put down here, but it's hard to do on a computer, so we usually don't. So liquid water, that's the standard form for water, but it could be, you could have an S down there, solid water, ice. Could that be a G for gaseous water? That'd be steam. All things we deal with in our lives. Aqueous. So this means dissolved in aqua, which is where this part comes from. So it means any of these substances that are dissolved in water. So if they are like salt, if you put it in water, it'll dissolve. Sugar dissolves. So you'd have that thing oh, written out there, but you'd have a little AQ next to it. Don't have an example for some reason, but it'd be like H2O, you can't do H2O. AG, little AQ there, would mean that it is being dissolved in aqua, in water. That's your fourth state of matter you'll need to know. All right, so let's look at these. Which of these is correct? If, this, if the word equation is zinc metal combines with sulfur to produce zinc sulfide, we need to figure out which of these ones matches that. So zinc metal. Well, if it's just zinc metal, this isn't going to work because it's got zinc and sulfur. So that can't be the right name. This has just zinc and this has just zinc. Okay, so, so far these two look like they might work. Don't know about the last one yet. It combines with sulfur. Well, both of these zincs are combining with sulfur, so they're both a fair possibility. To produce, that's our arrow, zinc sulfide. This has zinc, this has sulfur, zinc and sulfur. Hmm. So we have to remember how we get from the name to the formula. We have to go back to the periodic table and look up that even though zinc is in the middle as a transition metal, zinc only has a 2 plus charge. So there's a 2 plus charge on zinc. Sulfide, sulfur when it's in the compound becomes sulfide. There's a 2 minus, so 2 plus, 2 minus, we'll need one of each. So then this is the correct form of zinc sulfide. This is wrong, so it's not that one. It's not that one. This is all correct, so it'll be B. That's your right answer. Here's the second one. Get my head out of the way. So calcium metals added to hydrochloric acid and yields calcium chloride and hydrogen gas. So same idea. If you think you got it or want to try it on your own, pause it, give it a shot, then I'll go through it. Okay, so calcium metal, these all have just calcium. That's calcium metal. We didn't put the solids in there, but it'll be the same idea. It's added to hydrochloric acid. We haven't really done acids yet, so this wouldn't be a fair question for a quiz, but HCl, 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 okay, so they're all there. And yields means produces, goes to it, we're now on the product side. Calcium chloride, so there's calcium chloride here, calcium chloride here, cal there's calcium chloride in all of them. Question is, we can eliminate two of these because at least two of them have to be wrong. So again, we look at what's calcium's charge going to be from the periodic table. We find calcium has to lose two electrons become like a noble gas, so we have a two plus charge. And chlorine is only going to need to gain one electron to be like a noble gas, so it's one minus. So we have a two plus and a one minus charge. These are not even. We need more of our negative things. We need one more chlorine to have a total of two of them. So it's got to be Ca with two Cl's. That means these two are still fair game. A and B are wrong. Okay. So now the only difference is whether it's H or H2. And that question is H is by itself, so is it one of those diatomic elements or not? Is it a part of Brinkelhoff? Is it a part of that seven? When you look there and go, oh yeah, Brinkelhoff. Yep, that H is in there. It's diatomic, so it needs to have two. So it's gotta be C as our correct answer. All right, this one I want you to try and pause it do it on your own, then check, and I'll go through the reasoning a little quicker this time. 
Okay, so methane is reacting with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Methane we didn't learn, but this is methane, CH4. Also could be carbon tetrahydro tetrahydride plus oxygen gas, but automatically there's no oxygen gas in this one, so we know that can't be it, so that one's gone. Oxygen gas, oxygen's part of your diatomic seven, so it means it has to be paired up with two. You know, going to the products, I know it has to be this one or not enough info. So A and C are out. And it's trying to produce carbon dioxide, which we've named. That would be correct. Carbon and di means two, so two oxygens. And water, and well, H2O is water, so that's good to go. So it's got to be B. Awesome. Let's try two more. So solid, the solid zinc reacts with aqueous hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Now we're pulling in these little subscripts to make sure we've got them there. So this one's going to be a word equation. We want you to get the um, chemical equation. This is the chemical equation question. We want you to give the word equation question. So hit pause, give it a shot yourself, then hit play again. Not solid zinc, that's just going to be zinc as a solid, so as a metal, which is just going to be a S there for solid. Reacts with, which is our plus arrow. Reacts with aqueous, which means we know we have to have a little AQ in parentheses there. And aqueous hydrochloric acid, you might remember from the last one we did or not, it's going to be HCl. We'll do acids later in the year. That sounded wrong. We'll name acids later in the year. To produce, which is our reaction arrow, aqueous zinc chloride. Oh, see, there we go. So then we're producing aqueous, that's an AQ again, zinc chloride. Zinc has a 2 plus charge. Chlorine has a 1 minus charge. So they'd have two chlorines to make them even. And then hydrogen gas, again H2, because hydrogen is one of our diatomic molecules. If you ignore the two for now, that's balancing. If you did balancing, you should do it. If we haven't done it yet, don't worry about it till next section. The other way, magnesium plus O2 goes to MgO. So we need to turn this into a word equation. So we'd say, all right, magnesium, metal, or solid, either one's fine, reacts with, which is what the plus means, oxygen gas to form or to produce magnesium oxide you know we can name it that way because this is a metal and a non-metal so it's an ionic compound we have to say it's solid magnesium oxide it should come out to be something similar to that let me get my head on it there we go solid magnesium reacts with oxygen gas to produce solid magnesium oxide that's all there is to it now practice some more. Now yeah, we told you about that already. So here's two more to try. Unless you really think you've got it, and you're welcome to move on to the practice. But I'll give you guys a second to pause it, and I'll go through these really quick. All right. So we're given carbon plus O2 goes to CO2. Would be solid carbon reacts with oxygen gas to form uh, gaseous carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide gas, same idea, either one would be fine. All right, so we are given hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen to produce water. Then we have to get hydrogen gas, H2 because it's diatomic, gas, plus O2 gas, because it's also diatomic, reacts with is the arrow, water. Now they didn't specify what type of form water is, but in general, if they don't say, water is usually at room temp, it's usually a liquid, so we just put the liquid in there. The twos in there, again, if we've done balancing, you should know how to do and you should do. If you have not done it yet, we'll add that in a little bit. That's how it is. That's parts of equations and naming. Hope it makes sense. If not, come with questions.